Welcome back to the keg room. And now it's time to taste our local wheat beers. And this week we have um, wheat beer from Red Hill Brewery in Victoria. And as we in annexed New Zealand a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Yep. We have um, Townsend Brewery's three-piece wheat. Both these breweries have been around for five or six years. Um, Red Hill first. Um, it's a very interesting brewery because apart from you can go there and observe beer being brewed, they also have a cafe come restaurant open at lunchtime, but they also grow their own hops. It's actually a condition of their planning permit that they grow hops. So you can, if the mood takes you at the right time of year, you can go down there and watch hops grow, which is a bit like watching grass growing, but some people find it very interesting. Uh, with the uh, New Zealand beer, um, yeah, they're not so well known in Australia. Uh, they promote themselves as real ale. So these are beers made with bottled conditions and no added carbon dioxide, which is basically what most of the microbreweries do. So the wheat beers, uh, these are a pale sort of straw golden colour and they're, they're cloudy. They're cloudy because they're bottled conditioned, they're re-fermented in the bottle. Um, they're normally quite uh, highly carbonated, there's a lot of fizz and it's best to have them in special beer wheat beer glasses. Very little hop input, virtually no hops on the nose. You do get um, sort of the cloves and bananas on the nose, which is pretty intriguing stuff. Very little hop bitterness, very little hop flavour. Mm. So it's the wheaty type flavours, but what you're getting is sour sounds a negative thing, but it's it's not it's sort of a a sour clean taste. It's a very refreshing taste. Mm. It's a um, it's a nice taste. So what did you think of the Red Hill one, Robert? Yeah, well, um, let me just say that it seems to me that the world is divided into people who like wheat beer and people who, who don't like wheat beer. I mean, I personally like it very much. And uh, the Red Hill, it's the moment I picked it up and I looked at it, I went, that's a wheat beer. The moment I smelt it, I went, that's a wheat beer. The moment I tasted it, I said, that's a wheat beer. It's like totally true to style. It's very clean. It's got a hint of bananas in the taste. Mm. Um, yeah, very nice beer. Um, the only thing I found slightly off-putting was that when I, when I had one of these the other day, I was a bit overcome with the sludge factor in the bottom of the bottle, but I'm sure that was just my pouring technique <laughs> rather than a fault of the beer. Um, so I think let's go for three and a half stars. Okay. Robert, I agree with you. Totally true to style. I'm saying this is a four-star beer. And four stars pretty special. So why is this so good? Well, it's beautifully balanced with the, the, all the flavours in there. It's got lovely length. It's quite intense, but it's complex. So mm. completely different to that elephant of the room we tasted earlier. This is really interesting beer. Yep, four mm. stars. Yes. Now, um, by almost total contrast, the, the Townsend, Townsend three-piece three wheat beer, um, it's, it looks like a lager. It smells like a lager. In fact, if I didn't know it was supposed to be a wheat beer, I think I'd be struggling to pick it, really. It's, uh, it's not true to style. Although I must say that as it has a bit more air and warms up a bit, you start to get a hint, just a hint of that sort of banana-y sort of smell coming through. But uh, I don't know, it's not a very interesting beer, that one. It's a bit, bit bland. I mean, you could probably drink a fair bit of it if you wanted to, but it's a bit ordinary, really. I think it's maybe a two-star beer. Yeah, I'm even less enamoured with this beer. Mm -hmm. um, it's not clean. You know, the other one was a clean taste, and it's just... You never know, it might have suffered in bottle, it might have suffered in shop, you know, with heat and cold and whatever, who knows. But remember, these beers taste the way they do, and we actually went and bought these beers with our pocket money, mm. and so it's not a great beer. I've had it before, not getting really excited about this because it's just, it's been nothing. I, I reckon I've had home brews made from cans just as good as that, mm. um, and if I didn't know what it was, I go, mm, bit cloudy, that might have been a giveaway, but no clear definition of flavours, yeah, no complexity, very ordinary, one and a half stars, Robert. Yeah, fair enough.
Hi, my name is Enzo. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to prepare curry vegetable with beer. Um, as an ingredient, uh, I chose onions, garlic and uh, ginger, fresh ginger. We have also zucchini and carrots. We have uh, coconut milk, uh, coconut cream. Um, we have um, broccoli and cauliflower, um, my own curry powder and some oil and we do have an, a nice blend beer. Very easy, very, very easy. We start with chopping up our onions and the ginger. So we have garlic, ginger and onions going in the same sort of time. Uh, they're going to go also inside uh, together with um, the onions and the garlic because they're very dense as texture. So they need to also to be cooked down. Curry powder and we blend with the vegetables. So it's very important to put your curry powder at this time because we want to cook and release all the flavor of the curry um, into our uh, vegetables and at this time we also make some small florets of the broccoli florets are very small little flowers of broccoli and cauliflower I will take the stalks off so they don't become too bitter and the cauliflower as well Okay, and they go into the pot. So we can uh, take our flame a bit higher now. And that the whole bottle of beer goes into it. We reduce uh, this beer maybe one third down. So it's not too, uh, uh, too bitter. At this point, I'm going to add uh, the coconut cream into it. Probably half of this can, not too much. Otherwise it becomes too rich and heavy. And also I'm going to slice my, the zucchini. And we want also our zucchini to be nice and crunchy. Uh, if we had the zucchini at the beginning, this would be basically here. Uh, be nice and mushy now. We don't want that. It goes in there and simmer probably about 10 minutes with a lid on top. So our curry is ready. Vegetable curry with beer. Bon appetit. We're in Merbu North, on top of the Stress Lecky Ranges, down in Gippsland. We're outside Grand Ridge Brewery. Let's go talk to Eric, the owner, about this one. Eric, tell us about Grand Ridge Brewery. Oh, Grand Ridge. We're on top of the highest point on the Stress Lecky Mountains, right on the very tip. And I built up here because we've got beautiful underground water. And water is very important if you're making a really good 100% pure beer. And that's what we do. We don't add any chemicals, any preservatives. Uh, we don't add any sugars. We have natural sugars through the malt. So our beers are malt, hops, yeast and water. It's the way beer should be. Um, we make a wide range, about 13 different beers. A little bit of insanity, I know. But um, we just love creating different uh, concoctions. You also make a couple of beers which are really barley wines. Can you explain about them? Uh, we make Moonshine and Supershine. They've got a little bit of a cult following going on. So 8.5% the Moonshine, 11% the Supershine. Around about 8 months and 11 months to make. So a little bit insane in the real world to uh, hold up a tank for that long. Does your accountant know about that? 
He's not real keen, to be quite honest. Says it's, you know, really not that sensible, but um, not to worry. I mean, the Super Shine, you've got to book two years ahead, you've got to prepay it in advance, and at $200 a case, it's not a cheap beer, but it's a sort of beer you'll sip with a friend. You know, you and I would share one up at the uh, snow, in front of the open fireplace, very quietly, uh, and, you know, a bottle would do two of us just fine for the evening. So it's a very special beer. It's the sort of thing you do. It's a dessert beer, same yeah. with the Moonshine. And for burnt caramel sauces, sticky date pudding, mud cake, tiramisu. Eric, I, I know purity is very important to you, but how do you go with shelf life? Uh, good question. In the early days, a couple of little problems in sort of year one and two, 89, 90, while we're developing products, uh, but then we sort of got it sussed. We've learned how to vacuum extract oxygen out of the bottle uh, before we fill under pressure and then cap under pressure so we don't have oxygenated beer. And we also pasteurise a large majority of our beers, so we put them through a water tunnel, very slow process of heat treatment, just water sprays, brings the temperature up then down, and what that does is stop any microbiological regrowth. So we literally get two years minimum shelf life with all our beers, so it's very different to the vast majority of beers really around the world. So you've sort of got the purity, you've got the ageing in the tanks, so we choose to age the beer here on the premises because that way I can control the flavour, make sure exactly the profile that we want and then freeze that in time, literally through pasteurisation so it can travel to Singapore, the UK, Perth, Queensland and um, you can pick it up anywhere and know that that beer with that label is going to taste just spot on. That's what we love about it. It's been really good to see you, Eric. Thank you very no much worries, for your time. It's good to catch up again, mate. Welcome back to the keg room. And now it's time to try our imported wheat beer for the week. And we have Francis Kana Weiss beer from Germany. I went into my local bottle shop and I said to the guy behind the counter, who I know pretty well, I want a German cloudy wheat beer, one I haven't had before, and this is what he came up with. Well, I knew nothing about this brewery and I still don't know much about it, except that it's owned by our old friends InBev, who own such things as uh, Stella, Bex, Leffe, and this is one of the 200 odd beers that they make. And this is a bit of an issue for people going to bottle shops because there's nothing which indicates on the label this is part of a big company. Uh, there is a website. The website's in German, which wasn't uh, much good to me. And I've got to say, if any of our German viewers are watching this, if they could email me in English, please, and tell me what the locals think about this beer and what they know about it, I'd actually be really interested. Hmm. So... Taking it at face value, Robert, what do you think of the taste? Well, um, let me just say, it looks pretty good in the glass. It's got classic wheat beer cloudiness, and it smells like a wheat beer. It's got a nice head and all that sort of stuff, but it's a, it's a bit overdone. It's got a slight touch of that um, sort of medicinal, yeasty sort mm. of smell to it, I think. Uh, I mean, you compare it to something like uh, Schofferhofer or... or um, Wish Stefano or something like that, and it's like uh, it, it pales by it pales into insignificance almost. Um, it's I mean it's okay, it's okay. I'm not not going to bag it completely, but it's not great for my taste. I'd give that two and a half. Two and a half. I don't think it's even as good as the Red Hill. Let no, alone, no, no, yeah. no way. Yeah. Uh, let alone the Schufferhofer. Is that how you pronounce it? Mm. Yeah. Um, Why not? Well, it's a bit metallic. It's a bit thin in parts. It doesn't have flavour intensity. Mm. It's not really well balanced. And it falls down on the complexity. It's okay. If I was having it by myself with a uh, smoked salmon sandwich, I think it's probably okay. But when we put it on our tasting bench, I'm going, it's just not that good. I'm going to score this one too. Okay, fair enough. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Thanks very much for watching and tune in for next week for more talk about beer. Good night. Thank you. Good night.